Is the Bible good? Moses said, God, I can't take these people. The way they are behaving. And Bridge, let me tell you, where we are going, we need to encounter the presence of God. Else we can't get there. The password D. Missing the password D. Bridge, it's not that we don't know what to do, but we won't do. Two of us. We know. If you meet any bishop, any pastor is preaching, you say this. Then you say, Pastor, hold on. Then you start talking. You say, ah, are you a pastor? They ask you. You, you are not ordained, but they ask you that you are you a pastor. God, the revelation you are bringing him, so who's a pastor that you know? But the problem is that you don't do. And those of you who came from my leaders' meeting on Friday, I taught you this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. That Greatness in the kingdom is determined by what you teach and do, not what you teach. If you can teach it and you won't do it, you are the least. Let's read. Is it on the screen? Let's read. Go. Whosoever. Uh huh. Therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So what determines your greatness in the spiritual world? It's not just what you know. It's what you know and you do. So Acts chapter 1 verse number is it 1 or 2. He said this thing Jesus began both to do and to teach. That's why Jesus became great. And John the Baptist was said he was the least in the kingdom. Even John the Baptist. Why? Why was John the Baptist called the least of the kingdom? Jesus said he was the, one of the greatest prophets. And the kingdom is the least. Because last minute, when he was put in prison, he said, see the Messiah. Should we wait for another? And Jesus called the disciples and said, go and tell John. The blind sea. The lame walk. But you know something? That's one that they cut his head off. Because he started knowing God. But when trouble came, he didn't know God. Why? Because see, it's wanting to walk in power. It's wanting to walk in presence. How many of you were here on Friday? Oh, I said Friday. How many of you were here during the Feast of Miracle? Did you feel power? How many of you went home and you overslept? Will you mind me? Monday evening, we met in church. I thought only two or ten people would come. Over 40 people came. I said, we are praying for two hours. Before we knew, we were in three hours. Now, I wanted to end the prayer. Kai, the fire caught up. They were still continuing. I said, what is this? You find you, Pastor David has put in another worship. People won't go. This is not because somebody was leading prayer. This is because people are loving God. And people pray four or five hours that they have not prayed before. Not because anybody was leading them. Prayer topic number one. Prayer topic number two. No, it got to a stage. If you, if anybody is by you and is talking, you get angry because you you didn't want to hear anybody. You just want to go deeper because there's a realm. Take me deeper. There's a place called wait. There is there is no border. May that border barrier in your life be broken in the name of Jesus. Your amen is not good at all. Let's move on. And the Lord replied, I will personally go with you. Most, I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Look at verse 40, the NLT. The next thing is that when you go in, Moses said, I need your presence. When the presence of God is with you, you have some rest. Another word for it, you have some peace of mind. When, when people are, are shouting, hey, I'm dying, things are bad, you are smiling. Say, are, you not, are you not worried? For what? Sometimes people tell me, this, I have this dream. I remember years ago when my wife was pregnant. Someone would have a dream. I had this dream. One of the things I don't like about so-called 
familiar spirit prophets. It's when they come and tell you, God says, I should tell you this. And they are insisting that you do it. Now, God will never send you to come and tell me something bad. Number one. And if he tells you to tell me something bad, you better come with a solution. Because the God I serve is a solution God. I remember somebody came to me and said, your wife shouldn't be in a car for the next one month. Because they've plotted an accident. I said, okay. Then he said, but make sure she doesn't move from today. All right, this is manipulation and control. Right in front of the person, I pick my phone. I call my wife. Why are you home? Get to town. The lady said, eh? I said, don't pray. If anything happens to my wife, I'm not called. This thing will never happen from head to toe. She stopped church. She said, nonsense is that, you see, you can't enforce the voice of the devil over somebody who knows God. Listen, listen. Read your Bible. Surely they shall gather, but not by me. You have seen their gathering, but you have not seen my God. Let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> The prophet Elijah, Elisha was sleeping. His servant got up early, came to call his boss and said, boss, we are dead. So why are we dead? He said, we have been surrounded by the Assyrian army. They have bows and arrows, sword. <laughs> Elisha said, go and sleep. The servant said, sleep in them. They are going to kill us. He said, my son, go and sleep. Then said God, open his eyes. And when his eyes were open, and he saw the soldiers, the angels that were around, you know what he said? They, they that are with us are more than those who are against us. It was then that he went to sleep. When you spend time with God and you know the mind of God for you, you don't care who does not like you. Oh, you didn't hear me. You don't care who doesn't like you. He said, I will go with you and everything. Read it, go. Read, go. The Lord replied, read. When he personally go with you and I'll give you rest, everything will be fine. Okay, look at this. Everything will be fine, okay? That is somebody's language here. Everything will be fine, okay? <laughs> it's okay. Look at this. Everything will be fine, okay? My mom had something that she does. When you come and tell her your problem, you are going. She, 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 does, she doesn't speak God. Only one God she knows. And my mom will tell you, there are 365 fear not in the Bible. Take one a day. I don't know where this man got this from. And it's true too. So when you come and tell your problem, say, don't fear. Don't fear. He said, if, if God is working with you, Moses realized that if God works with him, everything will be fine. You know why everything is not okay with you? Pastor, I've come. Lay hands. I want to see power. Power, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I impart power to you, right? So that when you go home, you go and find the flame. You didn't hear that one. You go and do what? Let's move on. Verse 15. I don't have time. Verse 15. Let's go. Then Moses said, If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. Can you come to a place of telling God that God, before I get into this marriage, before I start this business, I'm going to take this thing to prayer. If I don't feel you, I'm not getting married. The thing that will give me a green light is your presence. How do we start a church building with no money in our account? Last week, we spent close to 30000 here. Last week. And you hardly will see us pushing people, begging people, prophesying on people, taking money. 
why? When God is with you, I will love you, Lord, my strength. Let's go. teaching this. I mean, anytime anybody, even me, anybody gives you a negative prophecy, first and foremost refute it. Don't accept it. It's not disrespect. When a doctor gives you a report and you accept it, it starts working. Because a doctor is operating from his level of understanding. You are also operate from another level of understanding. When you are agreed with your spirit grabs, it becomes a reality. Look, I always say this, that many people have sicknesses. Nobody knows about it. But the day they do a test and they diagnose that they have it, the thing starts working. When they didn't know, they were a little free. As soon as you were told you have HIV, maybe the thing is sinking in. That's why God got worried when Adam found out that he was naked. If, ladies, if it's to tell me, if it's not to tell me, when a guy proposes to you, whether you like him or you don't like him, and you said even no, and the guy goes, you wonder why the guy proposed. It's better he had shut up. Is it true or is it not true? As long as you heard it. Oh, ladies, it's not true. Eh? Oh. Ladies, let me know if it's true. I'm not a lady. Is it true or is it not true? I'm asking them. Queen, is it true? When you don't know, you don't know. You think all of that, he's just a friend. He just likes your company. He's just giving you things. Please. All of a sudden, is a am missing the topic. Verse 16. Let's be fast. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. 16. How will anyone know that you are favorable on me and on the people? If you don't go with us, for your presence among us sets your people and me apart from other people on there. Let me tell you this. What separates you and the unbeliever is not your job. It's the presence you carry. I go for meetings, board meetings. I go late. Or I go, the people talk. When they finish talking and I talk, then they say, my own is what they take. And those who say they have masters and doctorate, they are angry. Why are you taking this one's own? Jacob stays with Laban. And in the next few years, Laban becomes a millionaire. And Laban says that I have learned by experience that since you join my company, my business is prospering. You, since you join, what has happened to the business? Okay, let me ask. Since you join Bridge, Bridge Ministries, people call it Bridge. Since you join Bridge Ministries, since you join the choir, since you join the protocol, since you join the media, what effect have you brought there? Can I continue? Somebody says, can you be my friend? Just by being your friend, everything is going on well. You think the person will not be blessing you? Take me to the place, to that secret place. I can be with 
presence. I can't hear you. Say his presence. Now one of the things why you need his presence is Psalm 16 verse 11. In his presence there is fullness of joy. There is this joy that hasn't come from petition. That hasn't come from sex. That hasn't come from trauma or massage. It doesn't come from kissing. joy is when everybody is crying. You are happy. One day people were in a plane and the pilot said the engine has failed. So we should all call on our God we are going to die. This is a message from Bishop James Sir. He said he was a secretary to the late Archbishop Ben Sindahosa. They were in their play. And everybody was busy praying. They saw a man who was sleeping. And they went, Are you not praying? He said, Have you not looked at the back? He said, Why? Idahosa is sitting there. As long as he's in the plane, we will arrive. Let me sleep. Hey! The guy said, Ah, the man is at the back sitting down there. Why should I pray? It's a waste of time. And they landed safely. He was so confident. What makes people arm robber attacks Idaosa? Idaosa goes to his room and picks his Bible. In the name of Jesus, move. And they put all those with the machine gun. They all left. I don't know when gun became a machine gun. He held his Bible. And the Bible looks like a machine gun. Priscilla brought a show. I don't know whether he's still there. He, I don't know whether he's still doing land guard. Soldiers went to his house, land guard, to surround the whole area. Went to his room. He had a gun. And the gun, he had put the gun on my poster. The police went around, looked everywhere. They couldn't find the gun and they left. The gun was on my picture, poster. They didn't see a gun and they left. Now, some, somebody like that, Anytime you call him, I'm looking for him. He will come very fast. What is it about poster? Oh, but now he would have been in his own street. Now that there was gun, there was bullet, everything was lying down on the poster. So just go around and look around. Let's read. Give me the NLT. The NLT makes it very nice. That will show me the path of life. When you spend time with his friend, he shows you the path. That's one of the reasons why you spend time. He shows you the pathway. The path. Read it. Go. You show me what? The way of life. Granting me the joy of your heart. And the pleasures of living with you forever. How is tomorrow going to be like? You don't know. I have, I have so many political figures that they say they say things like they bounce things off me. <laughs> they get issues and say, "Man of God, please, oh, I want to bounce this thing off you." you know what is me? Bounce it off you. They just want to call you and see what you say. <laughs> and when they call me, I say, this, pass it, pass it. And it's always so And one day, one of them said, what is it about you that you always know what we should do? And I was like, I don't even know. But now I'm realizing that when a man spends time with God, he always knows the path people should take. You just know it. You had a case 
You had a case. How many of you saw the case? <laughs> he had a case. You didn't see his case. It was on everywhere. And I told him, relax. Everything went off. Then they came back again. He was going to take a step. He called me. He said, this one says you this one. I said, no, this is a trap. Just put it here. Just put it here. The problem with us is that we think we know. A man on his knees changes the economy of the world. Elijah said no rain. There was no rain. He said let there be rain. There was rain. A man who spent time with God to, told the whole world that the economy bag of rice, a gallon of petrol will go for 120 um, pesos by tomorrow morning. And they said, in a hurry, it cannot, if, 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 the, the price, even God himself is the finance minister, too happy. When, when people who know God are speaking, they just know. They just know. They don't need to go and pray. As you are talking to them, they, they think they just know. If Give me your phone. I can hold phone and I tell you that there is porn in the phone. I can hold phone. I'm saying, how? I begin to be feeling uncomfortable. I start having uncomfort in myself. One day I took somebody's phone, a lady. I wanted to open the phone. Then I realized that no, herself has some pictures on the phone. So I said, oh, take the phone. So I said, oh, that good so, Now my heart is at rest. Why? Well, I realized that if I go, what I will see will not help me. Just by holding the phone. Somebody gives you me a gift. I hold it. If it is juju, I know. My whole body will start itching. I start feeling uncomfortable. There's something about God's guidance. There is some joy. When some, when some things are of God, there's some joy. Not excitement. Joy is different from excitement. Excitement makes you play with the buffoon and foolishness. Excitement is um, donkey. Donkey mentality. Joy is like a spring of water that is in your belly. And the Bible said when Mary met Elizabeth, the baby in their system began to live for joy and they began to communicate. When you are talking about your vision and I know the vision will come, how do I know this vision is going to come? I listen to you and I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Then a face. I write that now. This one is, it is temporal. But when you're talking about the vision, I don't even see anything about it, but I'm having some joy and some peace within my spirit. Because I spend time with God, I know these things will see. The arts don't look clean. Everything doesn't look okay. But I just know that it will work. See, I said, go ahead. I said, man of God. I said, go ahead. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. You, when you are not happy, you go for one thought. No chat from more. You will still remain to class one. My abasa, minya girl bia, minya girl bia, minya girl. My abasa, so you scroll your phone looking for which guy to call for the night. Ube we no a feel west, west or westes. I think it's not true. Or oh, it's not true. Can we go on? Psalm 140 verse 13. Surely, righteous people are praising your name. The godly will live in your presence. If you find it difficult praising and dancing in church, you don't spend time in his presence. We are here. Tomorrow is bad and like you see. You are walking in church. They are playing Chatawale. She said, Your head is good. The thing in you is praise is responding to praise. That devil in you is responding. You come to church. 
the, the grammar is plain. I encounter you there when it comes to those things. When you are angry, you can't even shake your head. So I'm not in the mood. Who tells you you have to be in the mood to praise God? It is a presence. The spirit bears witness with your spirit. Read it. Surely, righteous people are what? Praising your name. The God will live in your It takes godly people to live in their presence. Listen, as for their presence, you can go there and come home. But to live there, it takes a certain protocol. Wash your hands, I told, I was telling you. And some of the things about washing your hands is, if you don't have a thankful heart, a grateful heart, a praising heart, a worshiping heart, you can't stay there. Hey, the elders and the angel, 24 7, above, arise, above, arise, 24 7. You, you are hearing a song. I will lay down my doors. What for? Four was happy. Throws are happy. Yeah, I will meet you at 4 p.m. That is keeping up. All oh, that has taken my heart. Leave me some of the pizza. Lord. Now hear me. If you like, try me. Now, I, I don't have time. Do you know that, do you know that the children of Israel, when Moses asked for this, this rest, I was teaching the first service. They walked with Moses for 40 years. None of them fell sick. If you are very sick, admit yourself in his presence. Admit yourself. Sentence yourself to three days in his presence. What are, what are you doing in his presence? You can even eat. It's not about fasting. You can eat. But what you are simply doing is that you are just having a personal tête a tête with him. I'm saying, Pastor, how do I do that? I want to teach you that very fast. Go to Psalm 73. Verse 22 to 24. No, give me some 32 first, please. You must always listen to me. Anytime you realize that you are finding it difficult to enter. Someone say, I want to, I want to, how many want to enter into his presence? The only thing that will keep you from entering into his presence is what I call unconfessed sin, not sin. Of course, when you sin, you can't stay there. Sinners don't stay in his presence. Satan told God, because he's a sinner, right? I move to and fro, not stay. Those who stay there are righteous. Psalm 32 from verse 3. When I refuse... Read, go. When, uh, let's go, go. When I refuse to confess my sin, my body wasted. Wait, my body is what? What is that? When you say in a overgrowth, your body wastes away. You are 22, but you look like someone who's 48. You are wasting away. Because they that wait upon the Lord, they renew their strength. Let's read on. I groan all day long. And the You are wasting your strength. Nothing is happening. Verse 4. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. Now, as long as you have not confessed your sins before God, God is always disciplining you. God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden because of sin, true of us. Did you read anywhere that Adam told God, God, 
Forgive me, I won't do that again. Did you read it anywhere? That's why he was driven out of the garden because he never confessed. God visited him. What he should have easily done was that God, I'm sorry for what I've done. Forgive me. But what did he do? He never confessed. Yes, see me see me. You see, they said the day I eat, I will die. I have no that I'm still here. If you sack me, I'm gone. Day and night, your hand of this was on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. In Talu, yes, you Your strength evaporated. You see that you see that you are praying in his presence. Five minutes you are tired. And look at the next verse. Verse 4. Finally, eh, verse 5. Finally, I confess. Read, go. I did what? To and to hide my. So you go to God and say, God, the truth is that I love Apio. I don't know what is it. And whenever I drink up you, I don't feel like coming to you. It worries me, Lord. What can I do? Because I want to be here. I don't like that thing. But what I want to do, like Paul, I don't know. I keep doing it. Please, can you help me? I want to be in your presence. But this thing is worrying me. Isaiah 118. Come, let us reason together. Now you are reasoning with God. confess I said to myself I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgive me and all my guilt is gone. Now let me tell you this what makes us not spend long time in his presence is called guilt. Are you going home? Should I end? Psalm 37, verse 7. NLC. Let's read, go. Be still in the world. Be what? Be what? Be what? You know what is still? Forget your hairstyle in the presence of God. Forget the lipstick. The makeup. Be still in the presence of the Lord. And do what? Wait patiently for him. Two acts. Don't worry about what? Who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes? Now hear me. Let me give an example here. You hear a prophecy. You are going to make it. Then you go home and you eat and you sleep. Elijah heard. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. True or false? When he heard it, come and see Chief Ahab. Zoom! He sat on his a four by four drove away and Elijah Elijah was with his servant he asked the servant is it rain he said no Elijah, Elijah didn't move from the praying ground to go and check his whatsapp to see if the money has come he told his servant that when the money comes call me I won't be disrupted you will see that it is about to rain. Then come and tell me. He kept praying. And then he will give a signal. Then he said, seven, seven times. Then finally, seven again. Hey! I can see the hand in the cloud. Like I said, that is it. Let's move. And the Bible said, when he set off to go to the palace, the hand of the Lord came upon him. 
and he overtook the chariot of Ahab. Before Ahab, who had sat up before he started praying, arrived at the gate. Elijah was there and said, you are welcome. He said, Master, how did you get here before me? You see, let the world go before you. But they just wait upon the Lord. You walk. They will mount up. You will fly. When others are going by road, STC, you are going by air. Ah, when we're going to somewhere, in Kumasi somewhere to go and do smile for a child, you put left before me. I want to pick a plane. I arrived, you are still not arrived. Because <laughs> by air, is it 30 or 45 minutes? <laughs> by road, four hours. <laughs> My car got spot on the road. The flight even delayed. But still, I arrived before everyone. Because they just wait upon the Lord will automatically, whilst you are waiting on God, God is fixing the path of your life. That is the reason why you are not getting along. He is repairing certain parts of you that will affect you in the later part of life. So by the time he sets you up, I'm not having somebody at all. Who wants to spend time with God today? Let's learn more. Or oh, we should close. When you spend time with God, you walk in confidence and not insecurity. First Samuel chapter 16, 14. Now, let me tell you this. When the presence of God came on David and the, um, the presence lifted from Saul, Saul became insecure. True or false? Now, let's read. Go. Now, the spirit of the Lord had, had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. What is insecurity? And we are here, and we mean yeah, yeah. This one is so city, and I'm not so city. Look at all my friends; they are making. I'm not. I'm not making. It's it's, it's like insecurity, and now you are backbiting people, finding ways to mean to stop them. David even had a chance to kill. Uh, uh, my friend said, Saul, he didn't even do it. No insecurity whatsoever. He didn't even have time. When you see people attacking people, they don't, they've not been in the presence. David never. He never did. Why? Because he waited. If we some 35, verse, verse 1, he said, fret not because of evil doers. Uh, this is not, not some 37. For they shall soon be taken away. You see, so many people who are so insecure. You are dating somebody. Somebody is talking to the person. No, hey! When you are being with God, that is when you go for job employment. And they say that there are over 400 people who have applied. Say, oh, it is mine. Say, ah, what do you mean it's mine? I say, it's mine. They say you were the last person to report. I said, I say it's mine. They asked you how. Esther has spent three days. And he knew that when he meets the king, everything is going to be his. He has spent one year changing. And he knew that when he gets to the palace, it doesn't matter who has met the king before her. When she gets there, the king is going to choose her. The reason why you look for things and you don't get that, you are so insecure about life. God, you've never heard from God. If you spend time with God, you will never be insecure about your life. I'm never insecure. People's ministry, people's this, no, no. Hello? I can't hear you. Psalm 73 verse 22. When you don't spend time in God's presence, you can't fulfill your destiny. You become foolish and ignorant. 22 to 24. Can we read? I was so foolish and 
must have seemed like what? A senseless animal to you. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. Leading, leading me to what? A glorious what? Destiny. Let me tell you a simple thing. A man by name Jehoshaphat, who has spent time with God, knew God, heard that his brother, king of Israel, was going to war. And the king of Israel had called all their prophets, thousands of prophets, and they have all prophesied <laughs> that he will win. He was so happy. When Joseph got there, he said, what is the Lord saying about it? They said, oh, all the prophets say he will win. Joseph said, is there not a prophet here? Wait a minute. Why is he asking for a prophet when he said there are thousands of prophets? He, what they said their prophet had said, in his spirit, he knew that it is not good. A man who spends time with God knows when even God is playing with him. Let me, let me explain. Maybe before you give it It's in God who told Moses that give me way so that I'll kill the people. Moses told God, repent. Did God want to kill them? No. Can we go on? So Joseph said, is there no prophet here? So, they have said, there's all, all the prophets, there's only one who didn't come. That prophet, he doesn't like him. Everything he says is negative. So I won't call him. Then Joseph said, tell me something more about him. He said, this guy, he used to be the one who used to pour water on the hands and feet of Elisha. So, can you bring him? When the guy came, he said, Ahab asked him, will we win or we will lose? Then the guy said, oh, king, you will win. Ahab said, you see, there's a evil spirit in Ahab. You are lying to me. You are lying to me. You know you will lose. So, why did you then accept the other people's prophecy? Because he that a God wants to destroy, they first make mad. But there was something in Jehoshaphat that made him know that he's not listening to these people. So they asked him, how come you, your, what you are saying is different from all these prophets? He said, the Lord opened my eyes and I was in heaven. Look, some are hearing on earth, some are hearing from heaven. He said, in heaven, I saw God ask a question in heaven that who will help me destroy Ahab? And one angel said, I am the one. Then he asked him, how will you do? Then he said, I will send a lion spirit. Of course, all the spirits is the Lord of hosts. I will send a lion spirit among his prophets who will lie to him. So all the prophets came and they lied to Ahab that he will win. One of the prophets came and slapped the prophet and said, a foolish prophet, where did God pass for me to tell you that this will win? He received a slap for telling the truth. But wait a minute, they went to war. Ahab was killed. Why? Because Jehoshaphat by his relationship with God will be able to be guided and know that this prophecy is not correct prophecy. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Am I talking to somebody here at all? This prophecy is not. There are so many people who have been destroyed by so called the Lord says. And because they did not spend time with God for themselves, they ended up in destruction. May it not be your portion. Amen. May it not be your portion. Amen. I say, may it not be your portion. Amen. Look at somebody say, I want to be in his presence. Look at somebody say, do you want to be in his presence? In the next few minutes, I want us to worship. Who's ready to worship God? Are you sure? Since you are sleeping, that's why I'm ending. You don't understand. <laughs> Look at someone and say, have you been in his presence before? Let me tell you this. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. And if you look at Luke chapter 1, when angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, he said, I am the angel. That's time in the presence of God. You can never spend time in the presence of God and Gabriel will not give you information. 
Gabriel will speak to you. May Gabriel speak to you. But Exodus 23, God says, see, I'm sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and to lead you safely to the place I've prepared for you. Verse 21. Pay close attention to him. Obey his instructions. Do not what rebel again, for he's my representative. He will not forgive your rebellion. The word other version said that he he stands in my presence. He's an angel that stands. Let me tell you this: if the angel of his presence is going with you, please, his presence is an angel. Hear me carefully. He speaks to you once. You don't take it. He speaks to you too. You don't take it. He stops. You are not a sinner, but you are a rebel. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hands. Drawing me closer to you. I feel your power in you. Nothing compares to this place where I may see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. Reaching for your heart, you hold my life in your hands, drawing me closer to you. I feel your power renew, nothing compares to this place. Where I may see you face to face, I worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm hearing God telling me, Let me tell you. He said, Anybody who doesn't know what to do with his life from now to the end of the year, pick a day, a day that you will choose to spend time alone with him. Give him a quality time. And within that week, he will keep directing you. And by the end of this year, you will know your full purpose in this world. 